Your question about uh, why are we born into a crappy world, really? <laughs> yeah. you, you, let's grab the mic. So, yeah. uh, basically, the problem I'm having with it yep. is in my lack of wisdom, yep. and I'm thinking like, okay, let's incarnate souls. M- maybe I would incarnate them on a sixth level of the spirit world or something like that, and they don't have to be incarnated on the first level. So and, and their teachers to be other people from the first level, and they and also on top of that they have to like pull all the emotions from their parents and uh, like surroundings and all the gen- previous generations. So, yeah. So to to solve this particular problem, if you think about trying to solve the problem, it's very complicated to solve the problem. First, firstly, God did put the first human couple in a sixth year state on the earth. They were in a six-fear state on earth. They arrived on earth in a six-fear state and the earth itself was in a six-fear state. So the actual spiritual environment of the earth when the first human couple arrived was in a six-fear state. So um, that in itself should indicate to us that God did what God felt was best, which was put the couple in the best possible environment for their education. Right now, if let's let's divorce the physical reality from the spiritual, the spirit uh, world reality for a moment, because there's reasons why God put him in a physical earth rather than in a spirit earth, right? Because there are places in the spirit world where they could have been placed, right? But that would have stopped them having the opportunity to have children. Do you understand? And God wanted an automatic process to occur for the incarnation of children. And the only way for that to occur was for the parents to create the two bodies rather than God doing it anymore. So originally, the first, the most, God always does the most economical thing. The most economical thing was to incarnate the first two people on an earth, create their spirit body and their material body, but design in their material body the, and their ability to create another spirit body and a material body through the process of sexual intercourse. God wanted humans, God wanted you, to have the experience of having children. Now that's for your education. God wanted that for your education. There's a lot of things you learn by having children. You learn what it's like to be a parent, Right? You learn what it's like to love somebody and, and they don't love you back. You learn what it's like to give to them and they don't give anything back. You learn a lot of things about love being a gift if you have children. So God wanted you to have the experience of having children. It's also the most economical thing for you to create the body of the next incarnation, of the next incarnating souls. So God wanted you to have that experience. Now, in the process of giving you that experience, which is part of your education, he also knew there were going to be potential problems with it, which he designed the laws to fix. So he he put together a whole heap of laws that redeem you from making mistakes, can stop you from making mistakes. Those laws, of course, require some level of sensitivity. Now, he created the laws in many levels, you could divide the laws in terms of the, there is a hierarchy of law, but you could also say he divided the laws into some specific areas of your life. So you could say there's the physical area of your life. In other words, he defined laws that, that control how fast your limbs grow, the shape and size of them. There's mathematics that defines what your face looks like, what your arms and legs look like, what, what your inter- why, why your internal organs come about. Uh, many of them are genetically controlled, but also there's mathematics built into those genetics so that you end up in certain proportions, so you're not looking out of proportion. Your, your body has been designed in such a way that it is proportional to some mathematical formulas, which, by the way, many things in nature are also proportional to. And God designed those laws to control the phys- your physical development and also your physical life. So he, he designed a law like the law of gravity, which controls you staying on the planet rather than flying off of it. He did all of that so that you could have an experience. So his purpose for these laws 
was so that you could have a personal experience over time and learn. And he created like the perfect like school, but it, but it's also the perfect like world for you, for us to come into in order to learn a lot of things. So you could say the things we learn are physical, and then generally the next level of learning we have um, is sexual in nature. Like so, by the time we're in, entering into our teenage years. We start developing sexually, so that causes us to trigger many desires in the soul that would that weren't there prior. And some of those desires are to find the other half. In other words, the desire for romance in your life. So he created these these responses that occur in your body, but also in your soul, so that you can learn about romance, about love. So he designed these things too. And he created a whole heap of laws that govern those as well. And then he also created a whole set of laws that govern primarily your soul, your, your, the human soul itself, how you experience things through an emotional process. So you imagine if you had no emotions at all. It's hard to imagine. But imagine you have no emotions. I know humans are trying to have no emotions, but that's different to not having any <laughs> So imagine there's no emotion. So there, there's no, you've never in your entire life had a feeling of romance. You've never in your entire life had a feeling of love. Never in your entire life had a feeling of kindness. Never in your entire life had a feeling of, you know, happiness, joy, any of those feelings. None of those, because you had no feelings. There was no laws and also no capacity in the soul, imagine, to experience those things. Imagine what your life would be like. It's hard to imagine, isn't it, because you wouldn't even feel so you wouldn't even, there would be no senses. Your body would have been created with no senses, even. But if you look at an animal, its body has senses, but there's no way, mechanism to feed into a soul that then has an awareness about those senses. Right? So God created you with the ability to have senses, so you could, as a part of this physical, and also a part of your spiritual and also your soul, there's this whole thing of senses that go on. The sense of sight, sense of hearing, touch, you know, taste. These kind of senses give you an experience. And the beauty of the experience is it teaches you things. Yeah? That's how one of the ways in which you have an experience. So your senses become important. And then there's also the uh, aspect of what happens to you in your future, your, your idea or concept of self, your concept of others, your concept of the world, your understanding of whether there is a God or not, and all those things. You could call those your spiritual life, you could call that. He, he also created that for you. So in the process of doing all of these things, God gave you so many gifts, but if you think about your process of discovering them, can you see it's going to have to be gradual? It's like, you know, you're born a baby. There's physical senses. Am on and a man, even though we're in an adult, in an adult uh, skin, an adult flesh suit, as some people call it, and you would have, you, st- you still got physical senses. You would feel your weight on the ground. You can feel the touch of others and so forth. Now, it doesn't matter whether you were born a baby or as a man and a man were, like incarnating as an adult, they are brand new to those senses. So they're just in the process of experiencing these senses. So you could say, and, and what, when we described all these things when I was teaching in the first century, I, I tried to put all these things together and, and I called it a name, which was, it's a, it's a process of becoming self-aware, you could say, isn't it? A process of becoming, like, of, of beginning the process of learning about oneself, right? So it, we, we called it, you know, the, it, it's the incarnation process, which is the soul, unaware, coming to a form which allows it to go through these experiences in order to become aware. And so I called it the process of individualization.
right? <clears throat> so the process of individualization is this process where you begin unaware and the moment you are incarnated, whether it was God doing it in the first, for the first human couple or when you are conceiving a child, from that moment on, individualization has occurred. The actual act of individualization has occurred. And the reason why God had that happening on earth was so that you could have the gift of having a child. So it adds to your experience as a soul to ha ha understand and know what it's like to have a child. So you can understand and know what it's like to love someone without it being romantic love. Right? But actually a love based on principle and desire for the welfare of the individual. Right? If, if God didn't allow you to have that process, it was going to be more difficult for you to learn these things. So that's why God allowed these things to occur. But in the process of allowing that, it also gives you as the parent the opportunity to damage the child. Doesn't it? Because you've got free will. So you could choose to love the child or you can choose to damage the child and you've got the option to do either. Right? And unfortunately, most humans do damage their children and oftentimes they're completely unaware of how because we have very little sense of self-awareness that we've purposefully developed. Most of us just go through life having this experience, having that experience and having that experience, not understanding that we're learning. We're just having this experience and having this experience and having this experience, think, so thinking it's just all experiences really, but we're not understanding that we're actually learning to engage spiritual, emotional, sexual and physical senses and we're learning how to use them. Right? Now God created the ability for you to do that but in the process of giving you free will, you could do that in harmony with the Creator's law or out of harmony with the Creator's law. And that's where our problems begin. Now, God can't then go, if he wants to be economical, can't go, like I'm, he's not going to rub out what you choose to do for the sake of the next generation. Because to do that, he'd be rubbing it out on every generation. He would have to do it on every generation. He wants humans to learn we need to take responsibility. This is a part of our spiritual senses that we need to develop, that we need to take responsibility ourselves for our own creations. And if we have done damage, we need to undo that damage. If we have taken the action to destroy something, we need to take the action to fix it. If we have done damage to our own soul, we need to fix what damage we chose to do. God's not going to fix that for us. There's not going to be any Messiah come along who fixes it for you. This is what a lot of people want. This is how the Christian faith got established because everyone was told, we're all sinners, don't worry, you can continue sinning and there's going to be one person comes along and his blood's going to pay for it all. Like... The harm to him will pay for all of your sin. That was the concept. And a lot of us like that concept because it means that I don't have to be responsible for paying for my own sin. It's not true. We are all personally responsible for our own sin. And you can see why, because he, God wants you to learn that he also, this is one of the things that he wants us to learn, and that is, if I sin... There are consequences, and I can fix them. And I've been created a powerful enough being to fix them. I've been created a powerful enough being to reverse the effects of my sin. You see, uh, a lot of human religions that have been created, all of which are for mostly false, right? And a lot of those religions have been created with the idea that you're a sinner and you forever will be. In other words... It's disempowering you right from the beginning of your life to think that whatever you start out with, you're going to end up with, or worse. Right? And that's not true. None of that's true. The truth is, 
God's created you with this gift of free will which says, I can undo the bad decisions I make, but I have to choose to do it myself. You follow? It has to be me making that decision, not for myself, not for you. You need to make the decision for you. I need to make the decision for me to undo the effects of my sin. Okay? 